Okay, so I think everybody's familiar with uh, the place uh, that the temporal bone uh, takes within the skull. There are various parts of the temporal bone. There's a broad, uh, thin squamosal portion that forms part of the lateral calvarium that articulates with the greater wing of the sphenoid and the parietal bone. There's a mastoid process that contains uh, the mastoid air cells. There's a zygomatic uh, process that forms the back part of the zygomatic arch. And then uh, the part that you really can't see very well on the lateral view of the skull is uh, the part that we're going to talk about today, the Petrus pyramid. And uh, you can see the external auditory meatus. Uh, 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 that uh, is the lateral part of uh, the part of the temporal bone that we're going to talk about now. A radiograph of a disarticulated uh, temporal bone on the right, and a base view of the skull with the temporal bone also disarticulated from the occipital bone and the sphenoid bone. Whoop. Uh, the Petrus Pyramid, uh, the primary area of interest today, is uh, the thickest part of the uh, temporal bone, and it uh, is located roughly at a 45-degree angle to the coronal and sagittal planes. The uh, top of the Petrus bone has a ridge, and the tentorium inserts into that ridge. So anything behind uh, the ridge faces the posterior fossa below the tentorium. Anything uh, in front of that ridge faces the middle cranial fossa. You can't see it well in this view, but the internal auditory canal is a feature of the posterior part of the temporal bone or the posterior slope. Uh, also, of course, faces the posterior fossa. And you can see on the lateral radiograph that there's very dense bone in this area. Just a diagram to show the four main divisions from lateral to medial in the uh, Petrus bone. I guess I'm having a little trouble with things advancing as I use my arrow, but I'll try to be careful. In pink, you can see the external auditory canal, which is aerated. Uh, you can also see the internal auditory canal more immediately. And then we have the uh, inner ear in blue and the middle ear in green. The middle ear primarily is uh, aerated, but it contains the ossicular chain and other ligaments. And the inner ear is surrounded by the densest bone in the body, the otic capsule. And you'll notice that uh, the cochlea is anterior within the inner ear and the vestibule and semicircular canals are located more posteriorly. So that's a basic orientation. This is a coronal plane view, uh, courtesy of one of our ENT docs, Tim Hain, who runs a dizzy clinic here at Northwestern. Um, and again, you can see the external canal now in the coronal plane with the tympanic membrane attaching to the scutum, separating the external canal from the middle ear. The middle ear is aerated, so air has to get in and out. It does so through the eustachian tube, uh, which has its opening at the level of the nasopharynx. And uh, the inner ear, now in the coronal plane with the cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canals, and then the cranial nerves uh, seven and eight transmit uh, from the brainstem through the internal auditory canal to innervate the structures in the inner ear. So I referenced an old article from the radiology clinics, believe it or not, I was uh, uh, practicing in 1974 as, uh, as uh, an intern and a resident uh, when the article was written, but it divided the uh, temporal bone into two primary coronal planes, anteriorly, the cochlea and the carotid artery, and posteriorly, the vestibule and the jugular uh, bulb and the jugular foramen. The posterior plane includes the internal auditory canal. And this is uh, uh, an image from that article plus a coronal CT study that we added for comparison that's roughly in the same plane that shows uh, some of the main features of the uh, anterior coronal plane, the cochlea and the carotid uh, canal, which contains a carotid artery. Uh, it was said that the cochlea looks like a snail. You can use your own judgment. And there are two, um, two holes above the cochlea that you can see in the CAT scan as well that uh, are uh, parts of the facial nerve as it travels through the temporal bone above the cochlea. 
It depends as to exactly which uh, anterior coronal plane you're looking at, but at this level, the facial nerve comes forward uh, uh, medially and then back laterally. So you're actually seeing two separate parts of the facial nerve. The nerve comes in the internal auditory canal, passes through a fallopian canal that you'll see later uh, to uh, a better extent. And the uh, uh, cochlear nerve, uh, and the facial nerve turns forward and back. What you don't see here is uh, the geniculate uh, fossa, which is a little bit more anteriorly located. But you can see the afferent limb of the facial nerve and the efferent limb. The efferent limb is postganglionic. It travels back uh, through the uh, middle ear and exits posteriorly. So uh, not only uh, have people referenced uh, this pattern, the cochlea, as uh, a snail, but uh, some people feel that these look like two uh, eyes or snake eyes, if you will. And again, the lateral snake eye, if you will, is the afferent limb of facial nerve, and the medial one is the uh, efferent limb past the ganglion. Also, you can see the uh, basal turn of the uh, cochlea and the promontory, which is the bony margin of the middle ear at this level. And we can see part of the ossicular chain. We're seeing the head of the malleus and the neck and the nubium. And then the nubium sits on the tympanic membrane, which is hard to see on this image because we have primarily a bone window and it's quite thin. One other feature that you see here is this, uh, this uh, septum, which is called Kerner's septum. It's a remnant of the petromastoid suture and it's a bony landmark that becomes important uh, when you're looking for evidence of bone erosion with certain pathologies in the temporal bone. And now we have the posterior plane or the VV plane, the vestibule and the vein. Uh, on the diagram, you can't actually see uh, a well-formed jugular foramen, but this is where it is. So you have the vestibule and vein in the posterior plane. Now we're behind the petrous ridge facing the posterior fossa. And the main feature of this plane is the internal auditory canal and the vestibule, which are in the same coronal plane. Notice that there is a bony septum between the vestibule and the internal canal. And remember, the seven and eight nerves are traveling through the canal to innervate the inner ear structures and the seventh nerve to pass through, uh, as we described. There's a horizontal bony septum that you often see. And here on the corresponding CAT scan, you can see that horizontal septum. That's called um, the falciform crest. And it's a useful landmark if you can see it. Uh, posteriorly, at this uh, level, we're posterior. So the falciform crest separates the superior and inferior vestibular nerves. Makes sense because the nerves at this level are at the same plane as the vestibule. More anteriorly, that falciform crest will separate uh, the nerve that runs in the anterior superior compartment of the internal auditory canal, that's the facial nerve, from the inferior uh, nerve that's anteriorly located, the cochlear nerve. And of course, the cochlear nerve must be anterior because the cochlea is in the anterior plane. Also at this level, we can see the oval window that uh, uh, allows uh, a communication between the vestibule and the uh, middle ear so that the stapes foot plate sits in this opening and uh, the stapes is connected, of course, to the other ossicles and the malleus has uh, a connection with the tympanic membrane. So when noise comes in the external canal, the tympanic membrane indents, the ossicles move, the uh, movement is transmitted through the stapes foot plate to the fluid in the vestibule and then to the, uh, to the inner ear structures that allow us to hear that sound. This is just a uh, heavily T2-weighted coronal MR. So of course the bone and the air are all black. You don't have the same detail that you see on the CAT scan we can see fluid in the uh, inner ear structures and in the internal auditory canal with the cranial nerves uh, coming above and below this dark structure, which is that horizontal falciform crest. All right, so now we'll get to uh, the axial plane. CAT scans again uh, have shown us uh, the anatomy in the transverse axial plane. And you can arbitrarily perhaps divide up from top to bottom uh, these structures into uh, four planes. 
at the level of the uh, uh, A-plane. I, I called it the A-plane because we can see the additus, and we'll talk about what the additus is. It's really the opening between the mastoid antrum and the tympanic cavity at the level of the epitypena, which is the highest part of the tympanic cavity. A little lower down, when we get to the O-plane, that is named for the O for the oval window, which sits between the tympanic uh, uh, portion of the facial nerve and the cochlear promontory. And of course, we mentioned that the stapes footplate sits in the oval window. A little lower down, we have the promontory of the cochlea that forms a bony margin of the uh, mid to lower part of the tympanic cavity. And then even lower down, we have, uh, of course, the eustachian tube orifice, but more importantly, not demonstrated on this diagram, anteriorly uh, the carotid artery, one of the vessels, and posteriorly the jugular vein, the other dominant vessel, within the vascular plane at the very bottom of the Petrus pyramid, hence the V-plane for vessels. So AOPV, I tried to make up a mnemonic for this, and uh, I failed miserably because I said, well, uh, A, another, O, obvious, P, mnemonic, V, verse. Another obvious mnemonic verse. Of course, mnemonic it has a P when you're talking about pulmonary things. It doesn't uh, have a P when you're talking about mnemonics, which, of course, starts with MN. So it's, it's, it's all messed up, but I remember it that way. What can I tell you? So we start with the highest planes through the temporal bone and the transverse axial view. And we can see at the level of the A plane, the additus, which is the aerated opening between the mastoid antrum and the epitympanum, or the highest part of the middle ear. At this plane, if you catch it right, you can see uh, structures that have been likened to an ice cream cone, with the head of the malleus as the ice cream, and the body and the short process of the incus as the cone. Use your imagination. Also at this plane, we're cutting through the very top, the roof of the external auditory canal. So you don't see the air in the external canal. You would see that a little bit more inferiorly if you got a slightly lower cut. But what you do see is the medial border of the roof of the external auditory canal, which is the scutum. It's easier to recognize in the chronal plane, but you should recognize it in the axial plane because there's only a little bit, bit of air separating that bone from the ossicles, and this air is prussic space. And we have a couple other images, this a little lower down, showing the lower part of the head of the malleus and a little bit lower part of the incus, uh, the bottom of the scutum. And uh, here again, another view showing the ice cream cone, malleus incus, prosex space, scutum. And depending on the angle of the cut, you may see different structures in the, uh, in the inner ear. At this level, we see the internal canal. Um, at this level, though, and this is an important image, we've been talking about one of the keys to the anatomy and recognizing it at the temporal bone is understanding the three-dimensional course of the facial nerve as it winds through the bone. So at the very top of the internal canal, we have a smaller compartment, the anterior superior most part of the internal canal, which contains the facial nerve. So this is where the facial nerve runs in the internal canal. There's a fallopian segment that turns forward, uh, and that's the afferent limb of the facial nerve. Remember the uh, medial most part of the snake eyes above the cochlea? Then we have uh, a composite uh, bony uh, hole for the geniculate ganglion, the facial nerve ganglion. And then the efferent limb of the facial nerve going back. Efferent is really the tympanic segment of the facial nerve as you go posterior. So you have this upside down V. You may also see a groove in the bone for the greater superficial petrosal nerve. If we go a little lower below the lateral semicircular canal, we're going to see the entire extent of the tympanic part or the efferent part of the facial nerve. In fact, if you look here, you can catch a little bit of it here. The facial nerve goes backward toward the posterior margin of the middle ear. And we'll talk a bit about uh, that as we get some more detailed images. Just to mention a pathology. Just a sec, sorry about that. Um, you can see the, uh, the left temporal bone. Oh, 
we can see the left temporal bone and the right temporal bone um, on uh, the normal side, even though there's a little fluid in the mastoid uh, air cell, everything else is normal. Notice the normal ice cream cone of the Malleus and Incus and the parallel nature of the, uh, uh, of the uh, manubrium of the Malleus and the long process of the Incus coming down on this side. You cannot see that normal parallel pattern. That tells you that there must be um, a dislocation of the ossicles on the right. And uh, uh, that uh, normal relationship uh, should be present in all cases as you go up and down. Of course, in this case, to work out exactly how the ossicles are dislocated, we would uh, look at also the coronal view, but this is an incus uh, dislocation because of the abnormal orientation. Notice the long process of the incus should not be seen in a linear pattern on an axial view because it runs up and down. Um, uh, another uh, uh, pathology that may be seen uh, at this uh, A level is a uh, cleistiotoma. Uh, acquired cleistiotomas, uh, let me just go back a sec, um, are due to uh, invagination of uh, the uh, porous flaccid of the tympanic membrane, which then may uh, wall off. It contains a uh, uh, keratinizing squamous epithelium that over time may continue to desquamate and uh, you get a non-neoplastic uh, mass that will enlarge and erode the bone in the area. Um, notice that uh, uh, cholesterol is a misnomer because it doesn't actually contain cholesterol and uh, uh, remember it's not a neoplastic mass so it doesn't grow by cellular proliferation. Um, on a clinical exam, you may see a white pearly mass between, behind the tympanic membrane, and as it grows, it may erode the ossicles and cause conject, conductive hearing loss. And here you see the area that uh, cholesterol at least secondary cholesterol often form in. And as they grow, they may erode the bony margin that the tympanic membrane attaches to the scutum, and they often extend into the epitympanum uh, at the level of the additus and uh, therefore they may be seen in the A plane. This is just a coronal and axial uh, temporal bone uh, CT showing filling in of the normal air that we should see in prosect space, which lies between the scutum and the ossicles. And the lateral aspect of the ossicles are slightly eroded, prosect space is widened. The scutum is still visible, although it's a little bit foreshortened. So not an uncommon pattern that we see with cholesteatoma. This is a smaller cholesteatoma that hasn't extended as much into prosec space. And you can see uh, the scutum is blunted in the coronal plane and there's erosion of the uh, portions of the manubria and the malleus and the soft tissue mass extends into the external auditory canal and into the uh, middle ear. You can also see erosion of the uh, incus uh, more posteriorly. With uh, cholesterol, there are a number of things that we should remember to look for. Uh, as cholesterol grow, if they're not discovered and they continue to erode bone, you may get into uh, serious complications. Uh, the uh, uh, lateral semicircular canal isn't far away and it may be eroded and you can develop a labyrinthine fistula which may present with acute uh, vertigo. The facial nerve canal, uh, uh, may be eroded and facial nerve palsy may result. And if it's let go too long, uh, the roof of the middle ear, uh, which we'll talk about uh, soon, may be eroded and inflammatory debris can extend intracranially and eventually lead to an intracranial abscess. But when you're looking at the images, you need to look at the ossicles. You should look at the stapes if the mass extends more immediately. And uh, We'll talk a bit more about that. This is a more advanced cholesteatoma. Notice that the ossicles are quite eroded and hard to recognize. There's a little bit left of the incus and the incuostapedial junction. You can see the stapes extending toward the oval window, but most of the uh, epitympanum and part of the mid, mid part of the middle ear, the mesotympanum, are opacified by soft tissue. And uh, this patient uh, presented with uh, imbalance and uh, unsteadiness. And you can see that the lateral semicircular canal 
is eroded. Uh, this is the superior and the lateral. The uh, uh, vestibule is seen here with the uh, oval window and the round window niche. So you see a lot of normal anatomy. This is the tympanic facial nerve and you can see how the mass is approaching the nerve, although this patient did not have a facial palsy at this time. This is an old case uh, where uh, imaging was done late. You can see that there's erosion of the posterior margin of the Petrus ridge and the roof of the middle ear, the tegment tympani, and uh, this patient had developed a ring-enhancing mass in the cerebellum, secondarily a brain abscess. Um, Clesiotoma versus chronic otitis media. So when you have an opacified uh, tympanic cavity, on CT it's very difficult to tell whether you're looking at fluid or soft tissue, and if it's soft tissue, type of soft tissue it is. So in this day and age, most likely, uh, if that was an issue, we'd go on and do an MR study as a follow-up. An MR is complementary to CT in the workup of temporal bone pathology. Um, but uh, one thing that uh, uh, we can do is uh, uh, decide whether or not there's significant bone erosion. Uh, fluid uh, will not erode bone. Uh, so if there's bone erosion, it's not simple fluid that you're looking at on a CAT scan. Uh, you can uh, try to distinguish fluid from granulation tissue, which may erode bone by using intravenous contrast enhanced imaging, either with CT or uh, better with MR because granulation tissue may enhance, uh, fluid will not. And also cholesteatomas typically do not enhance, uh, so you can generally use contrast enhanced studies to try to go further. This is a pre-infusion and a post-infusion coronal T1 weighted MR study of the temporal bone. You can make out some of the anatomy. You can see the internal auditory canal is sort of gray. Uh, there's uh, fat uh, in the Petrus apex, that's white on T1 MR. But on the T1 MR, you can see that the whole middle ear is uniformly gray. It should be black, it should be aerated. So is this fluid or is it a cholesteatoma uh, or granulation tissue? Um, you can see uh, that uh, on other images, we decided that there was no free fluid level. So we're primarily trying to distinguish granulation tissue, which should enhance from a cholesteatomatous sac, which will not. And on the post-contrast scan, we can see that there's still a sizable soft tissue mass that does not enhance. That's uh, consistent with cholesteatoma. There's some enhancing granulation tissue lower down in the hypotympanum. So contrast scans may be helpful. This is a, uh, a post-contrast uh, uh, imaging study that is meant to show complications of infections in the uh, inner ear and mastoid sinus. Uh, this patient uh, presented with swelling in the preauricular region. Notice that this is, whoa, not sure what happened there. Okay. Sorry again about uh, the issue with uh, me moving the mouse. Not sure why it's so sensitive. But uh, you can see laterally uh, this uh, mass that the patient noticed in the preauricular region is fairly iso-intense on the T1 image. Uh, and uh, on the post-contrast scan, you can see this non-enhancing fluid collection that tells us that there is uh, an abscess in the preauricular zone. This emanated from infections that began in the middle ear. You can see enhancement in the middle ear as well. So, Complications of mastoiditis and otitis media may include not only brain abscess, if the mass erodes through the tegment tympani or the roof of the middle ear, but if there is extension laterally, you can get uh, abscesses in the soft tissues, as you see in this case. 